Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahawa, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Kadash, double honors and salutations to the elders and apostles and bishops of Great Mistone, to the Akim and Akwaf, try the four corners of the earth, holding on to the gospel of the Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. In sincerity and in truth and diligence of mind, this is Ben Amenasha with the DC Camp short lesson for the hopeful elect. Yes, yeah, so uh, the Lord is the a man of His covenant, right? And that's one thing that uh, has to be reflected in our spirit. You know, that's the image of the Lord, right? The man of His words, the man of His, of his covenant, all right? And that image has been uh, bestowed upon the Israelites, right? you so-called Negroes, you so-called Latinos, and uh, you so-called Native Americans. And we have uh, that great calling to accept uh, what the Lord has set before us, the path forward, all right? the path to salvation. That's the only way we could have our souls redeemed by the Lord Amashiach Yahweh Shai by accepting the image, the direction that uh, has been set before us, right, which is this gospel, right, the, the law, statutes and commandments and the, the books of prophecy, you know, and uh, you just in, in, include the Psalms and the Proverbs in there too. So you already understand that uh, you cannot uh, ignore your heritage, man, you know, and uh, that's one thing we all have to realize is that the image of the Lord is our heritage. You have to wear it. You have to put it on. That's our righteous garment. All right? That's the only covering that the Lord has uh, requested that we should put on. All right? And that's, that's the only uh, opportunity that we have. That we can only rely on man there's nothing in this world that can replace the the, the covenant of the Lord has to give us the same benefits and protection so that's the reason why we need uh, to take the you know the the calling of the Lord seriously you know you're supposed to fear the Lord you know fear the Lord and serve with trembling so the book of Ecclesiastes Chapter 5, verses 4 to 5 tells you that uh, when thou vowest a vow unto the Mosai, right, a covenant, all right, defer not to pay it, for he had no pleasure in fools. All right, so the Mosai expects uh, his children, his sons, to uh, be a reflection of him, to have a reflection of his values. All right. So when uh, when Jake doesn't want to uh, be a reflection of uh, the heavenly Father, they are considered as fools. You know, they're considered as as uh, entities not regarding the uh, existence of Yahweh Bashim El Shai Bashim Kakadash. Just like Psalms chapter fourteen verse one, you can get that real, real quick. You know, Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, what does he say? The fool had set in his heart, right? The fool had set in his heart, there is no power. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do it good. So this is why the Lord considered our, our, our people that uh, refuse to uh, hold on to the words of life, to the words of repentance, he considered them as fools, you know, as uh, clouds without water, you know. They have no uh, value, no intrinsic value, all right. And they're what? They're just, uh, just there, you know. They provide no, uh, they provide no service, all right. That's what uh, this gospel is about it's about serving the lord okay you have to be a reflection of uh the source you come from 
All right, you have to be a reflection of righteousness, judgment, and mercy, and faith. All right, so we go back to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm going to start from verse 4 again. It says, uh, When thou vows a vow unto Yabashim, Ashabashim, Kakadash, defer not to pay it. All right, so do not uh, put it on hold, do not procrastinate. All right, it should be in your heart, it should be burning in your heart to fulfill the will of the Lord. All right, that uh, you've uh, accepted to uh, be a part of, you know, to uh, execute, you know, the actions that uh, you've made to be a priority. All right, so when you made the word of the Lord a priority, you have to treat it as such. All right, for he had no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. So that's what it is. It's a balance. You know, what you say and what you do has to be balanced out. And that's how the Lord operates. Whatever the Lord says he's going to do, you know, he gets it done. Once he says it, it has to be done. That's how the Lord operates. You have precepts that back that up. And then verse 5 says, Better is it that thou shouldest not vow that that should then that thou shouldest vow and not pay so you have to know what level you're on man do not speak out of uh, hastiness you know scripture talks about do not be in a haste to utter whatever is in your mind before the lord you know you have to reflect you know you have to uh, use wisdom in your conversation in your thoughts in your action and that's how you're able to uh, have a balanced approach in the tumultuous environment which we live in. You know, because when Jake is in the bind, man, Jake always likes to make promises. But at the end of the day, man, when he gets put in a tight position, what's he going to do? You know, just like, uh, you know, the, the market was acting strange, you know, this week. You know, and then you have the... Uh, the economic situation, then you have the IT, you know, computer outage situation, and then you have the the, the storms and all that stuff. So when 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 people get first in, into a corner to test their faith, are they going to keep their vows to the Lord then? And that's something we all have to prepare for. You know, are you going to be able to keep your vows unto the Lord? In the time of uh, Jacob's trouble, during your darkest hours, will you be able to hold on to the vows that you've made unto the Lord? And that's one thing we have to rehearse for every single day. Now in the book of Job, actually it's like a Joshua. <laughs> yeah, I get from the book of Job soon. The book of Joshua says this. This is what Joshua had to mention to uh to Israel, you know, our four parents, our forefathers, our people, about to uh, continue in the way that we have been instructed by our forefather Moses. Joshua chapter 24 verse 14. Now and therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And that's a commandment of the Lord. You know, that's a commandment. That's the commandment of the Lord. All right. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. That's what the Lord has always been recommending to our people to uh, keep their eyes single in maintaining their uh, service in the Lord. And when we talk about service, talk about uh, the way you you live your life, the way you conduct your life, your life uh, activities, you know, from uh, whatever you do at home, whether you uh, to what uh, you know uh, you doing on the plantation, when you go shopping, when you travel, and all that stuff. It's a sum total that has to uh, match up with the righteous requirements of the Lord. All right, and then verse. 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the powers 
which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the powers, or the gods of the Amorites, right, in whose land ye dwell. And that's what it is. You have to make a choice. Where do you stand? Okay, you cannot uh, be holding on to the American Constitution and then uh, you want to also trust in the Lord. You have to learn exactly what uh, priority has to be upheld. Okay, you can't uphold the traditions of men and uh, put it above the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. How about Shema Shai, about Shema Kadash? Yeah, and that's one thing the Lord does not allow His commandments to be overwritten, you know, to be overruled by uh, the governments of this world. Just like you read Isaiah chapter 10 verse 1, you know, about the unrighteous decrees, the law doesn't allow the unrighteous decrees to just uh, overrule his uh, law, statutes, and commandments without him having a response sooner or later. And that's the reason why you know, we have to uh, be careful how we tread in this society. Just because it's legal in Esau's society doesn't mean it's righteous, all right? And that's the situation we have to be uh, constantly aware of, all right? And then uh, it says, uh, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, 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 That's a proclamation that... Uh, Joshua, forefather Joshua had to make, you know, he had to make a stand. And that's one thing we have to uh, accept. You know, when you go through these circumstances, you still have to reinforce that belief that uh, whatever, you know, uh, experiences you've had with your family members and all that stuff, Every day you still have to serve the Lord because how so many of our people that are stuck in Islam, they're stuck in all this uh, so-called Christianity, and all these churches that have five hundred one C three tax exempt status, they're stuck in there, you know. But what do we do? You know what? Do, what does the man of the Lord do? You know, you see your people holding on to Catholicism. They're holding on to Islam, they're holding on to Buddhism, you know, they're walking around as so called atheists. Yeah, so you have to make a, a decision, a final decision of where you're going to uh, focus your, uh, your mind, your intent. All right? So we go again to the book of Sirach, you know, because. Every brother in, in Great Millstone has always had that uh, moment of realization and that uh, we are found worthy to receive mercy, you know, as we go through our daily lives and uh, as we are preparing, you know, for our salvation at that end that we are found worthy to be to be saved, to be delivered by the Lord of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, all right? Now, book of Sirach, chapter 18, we're going to look at verse 22, and then uh, all the way to 24, it says, Let nothing hinder thee to pay thy vow in due time, and defer not, and defer not, until death to be justified. So do not wait to the last minute, man. All that, uh, you know, procrastination and delay and delay and delay it doesn't benefit the cause of uh, of, of an Israelite salvation man. you know tiring 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 when it's time to get the job done to start the job get the job done keep the ball rolling you know Jake is still uh, stuck with the trend of this world and then Jake gets behind, you know, falls behind. Nobody nobody that wants to serve the Lord wants to be behind. You know, you want to be ahead. That's why you have the word prophecy. You, you're giving the warning. You're giving the memo ahead of time so you could get yourself ready. But when our people do not uh, regard the prophecy of the Lord, now they get left behind. 
all right that's one thing we have to be uh wary about man nobody want to be left behind nobody wants to fall behind in this ministry that's why you need to have access to the holy spirit at all times whether your spirit is you know your your, your spirit is down or not you know whether you're in a good mood or a bad mood or sad or depressed or angry or frustrated you still have to maintain that connection with the holy spirit that's why you have the holy scriptures to boost your morale to boost your uh, focus to boost your uh, your being to boost your perspective right to generate a, 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 a lively mindset that's what the scripture does for you it's to generate a lively vibration that's why you know scripture talks about lively stones so you have to keep that vibration of liveliness intact you know the Lord is not the Lord of the dead he's the Lord of the living so you have to replenish that uh, energize, energizing energy you know, well the energizing vibration you have to constantly have that supply ready man you know just like they always say there is no uh, fire without fuel or wood or coal yeah you have to supply you have to supply you know the the fuel that's necessary to keep the fire burning you know that's why we have these words these words is the fuel you know to help us stay hot and uh, sharp in the spirit of the Lord that my shark shy okay and now verse 23 it says before thou prayest prepare thyself in other words you have to keep yourself grounded you know in other words you have to pray before you pray <laughs> all right so that you do not uh, put yourself in a precarious uh, situation and be not as one that tempted the Lord all right so you have to make sure you pray for the Lord to keep you grounded and humble and focused and diligently applying that spirit of restraint you don't want to be uh, aggressive when it comes to uh, your request before the Lord you don't want to be how you say it uh, in anxiety mode you have to maintain your composure all right that's why the lord bears that uh, spirit of long suffering you have to tap into that spirit of long suffering all right and then verse 24 says think upon the wrath that shall be at the end all right the, the anger of the lord and the time of vengeance when he shall turn away his face so you have to consider you know what can happen to you if you do not follow through with being temperate in this ministry with this gospel all right in, in not being circumspect can cause you to be obliterated all right you do not want your life to be uh, concluded with the loss you want that final win and that's what we're walking forward that's what we're walking for all right that's what we're walking forward to all right so uh you have to constantly endure that spirit of patience man don't get carried away by your anxiety by your uh, by covetousness man you know because uh, uh, covetousness can also trigger a person's anxiety you know the lack of faith in the lord of my shaky shy can can trigger a person's insecurities you don't want to be living your life based on insecurities so you have to start flushing out the leaven one of the leaven that's uh, keeping your spirit drained you have to get rid of it man all these unnecessary burdens and weights you have to uh, learn to shed it up man so you can move efficiently in this ministry before the Lord of my shot you don't want to sound so desperate just like when you go to a job interview you know you have to conduct conduct yourself in a so-called uh, professional and ethical manner you don't want to sound so desperate otherwise the interviewer will just uh, look at you and just uh, you know take notes and then before you know it man you're getting passed over so in this ministry man you have to be serious about uh, your calling otherwise you know you're gonna be uh, ignored by the Lord in the time of salvation you know so you have to be careful how uh, 
you conduct yourself in this ministry man so the book of job is what we're looking to very uh this very moment chapter 4 verse 4 Let's see what it says thy words have upholding him that was fallen all right and that's what happens man you know words uphold you know words the words of the lord in the words of prophecy uphold just like when folks go to see a therapist you know for counseling you know folks are looking for a way to cope with their situation to cope with their uh, bouts of failure you know even when you're succeeding you still need to uh, have a moment of reflection that's what this so-called therapist in the world do man you know they provide professional uh, counseling to uh, their clients and in this ministry you have to understand the value of the words of prophecy the words of uh, the apostles you know and then uh, you read Job 4 and 4 thy words have upholden him that was fallen and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees and that's how it is man you know words words help you know the words of uh, rejuvenation the words that a lot Hamashak Yahushai says that you know, his words are spirit and they are life. Yeah, they bring you back to uh, a level of liveliness, man. You can't live your life in, in, in suspended animation mode that you, you're just there but you're not functioning. You have to function. That's what the Lord has given us this word, these words for, man. His Holy Spirit. So you read the book of uh, Psalms chapter 19 and then... Uh, verse 14 you see the, the last verse it says let that words let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer and that is what we have to uh, keep our mind focused on you do not want to ignore the validity you know the validation that the lord offers man once the lord has validated your existence upon the face of the earth there's nothing that can take you out of that uh, categorization man. once the lord has branded you as servant his faithful servant there is nothing the world can do to uh, cancel that you know there's nothing the accuser of the brethren can do to eliminate that designation you know, the Lord has already said, that, you know, his elect are engraven in the palm of his hands and no one could take them out of his hands. So you have to uh, walk with confidence, you know. You go to sleep, you know, as you lay your head down at night, even, you know, in the daytime to rest. You know, you lay your head down with confidence that your hope is in the Lord. All right, that's one thing you have to remember. And uh, you... you mark every progress you make in this world with a grain of salt man you know you could make you know it can be profitable in this world you know you get a well-paying job and then all of a sudden the infrastructure start having all types of uh, events you know folks can't get their money from the ATM they cannot get uh, a reading of their their lab results at the hospital so they don't know what to do you know there is no medication available no you know there is no fuel available to, for transportation and all that stuff there's nothing in the grocery store those are things that uh you have to consider you know that uh what will you do when those times hit you know are you prepared for that are you prepared you know to uh show to the lord that uh, his words are more valuable than the objects on this earth and that's a question we all have to prepare to answer you know you, you can say now yes but in the future when we face with the circumstances at gunpoint knife points you know whether it's with a baseball bat we used to be able to maintain your faith so Lord, we used to be able to keep your vow when you're staring death in the face. You know, 
when you, you stare in oppression and persecution, will you be able to hold your faith, you know, your profession? Will you be able to uh, hold on? All right, I read it again, Psalm 19 and 14. Let, that words, let the words of thy mouth and the meditation, well, I read it again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord my strength and my redeemer so you have to acknowledge that the lord is our strength and our redeemer man you know that's what we all pray for that we do not get ignored by the lord that we do not get walked over while the lord is uh handing out you know his uh gifts you know to uh his chosen you know so you, you want to be called and chosen by the lord and you want to uh, make sure that uh, you do whatever it takes to stand firmly, all right? That's why we read this book, Book of Matthew, chapter 21. It's one of my uh, favorite uh, parables that Yahushai used to uh, teach the people about those that's uh, in position of authority, but uh, they are not performing as they need to perform. And that the Lord has to choose those of, uh, of a lesser, you know, class, a lesser uh, statute, or lesser stature, you know, the, the what you call the so-called illiterates, you know, to... Uh, <laughs> to preach the gospel, you know, when when the so-called professionals are not doing the job, man, the Lord calls the the the, the you know the amateurs, so-called amateurs, and that's what the the the, the Pharisees and the and the Sadducees and the scribes, that's what they view the uh, the, the disciples as, man, as so-called uh, illiterates, man, and hardly. You know, hardly uh, could make a, a professional uh, deduction. You know, they just like you say, it's uh, guys with, you know, <laughs> like guys from the hood, guys from the, from the barrio, you know, your, your regular uh, walkers, man. You know, when you say bottom of bottom of the barrel, folks like that, man. You know, the, the, that that that. Uh, that do the hard, the hard physical labor, you know, working construction, you know, taxi cab drivers, fishermen, all that stuff, man. Yeah, that's how they, they view the uh, the disciples of the Lord as a lower class, you know, because of uh, how you say it, man, the 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 favoritism in society, man, you know, because of politics. You know, you, you do whatever you can do to survive. And that's one thing about this ministry, man. You know, you, you're able to identify those that are at the bottom serving the Lord. And you can also compare that to those of this world that uh, have all these mega, mega churches and mega images, you know, mega PR firms, but uh, they're not really ministering to the people. They're just... Uh, holding the people hostage, all right? So, Matthew chapter 21, verse 27, and they answered, Yahweh Shai said, we cannot tell, this one Yahweh Shai, you know, did not want to uh, respond as per the folks trying to trap him up, you know, when it came to the discussion of uh, John the Baptist. And uh, when Yahweh Shai, you know, caught them in their deception, you know, they, the, you know, the so-called uh, gainsayers did not want to uh, answer as by John the Baptist, you know, because uh, the people weren't there, you know. So that's just how it is, man. When the truth is put on trial, people get exposed. So the gainsayers got exposed. They got trapped in their own trap, you know, and... Uh, 
the folks were waiting to jump on them, you know, if they, you know, say that uh, John the Baptist wasn't uh, doing the Most High's work. Yeah, so, <laughs> despite all the evidence. So, yeah, was shy turned the tables on them, and they couldn't uh, deal with it, so they just uh, defaulted, man. Matthew 21 and 27, and they answered Yahweh Shai and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither do, neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. So by him healing the people and uh, edifying them with uh, the words of wisdom and performing miracles and all that stuff, he wasn't going to let them know. All they had to do was go uh, read the scriptures, search the scriptures, you know, have faith in the words of prophecy. But they were such on a low level that they could not uh, believe what was going on. They were stuck. They were stuck in the in the mud of uh, confusion. And yep. And then verse 28 says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, Go walk today in my vineyard. All right. He answered and said, I will not. But answered, but afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. So that's what it is, man. It's about. Uh, Doing what you say you're gonna do, man. If you say you're gonna do something and you do not do it, it becomes a problem. If you say you're not gonna do something, at least, you know, whoever is sending wants to send you knows that you're not gonna do it. But when you have a change of heart and then you do what is told of you, then it's a uh, it's a sign of uh, improvement, sign of repentance. You know, so when you're hoping for something to go the way it's supposed to go, and initially it's just, uh, you know, tumbling and fumbling, and then it gets towards a level that which things start to work out, you know, you feel relieved. You know, you feel a, a, a sign of a, a psalm of joy. Okay, then so on to uh, make empty promises, man. God is not a father of empty promises. You have to have content. Your character needs to have content, man. Proper content, not just fluff. You know that's one thing we all have to uh, admit. Your character has to have a substantial content that is valuable to the Lord, and that uh, content is faith. When you have faith in the Lord, you're able to finish up the work. You know that uh, He has set before you all right yeah and then verse 31 says whether of them twain did the will of the father they say unto him the first yahweh said unto them verily i say unto you the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of yahweh before you and that's just how it is man you know the the low levels the so-called rejects you know, of our, of our nation, the ones that are looked down upon, they have a better opportunity of uh, being redeemed by the Lord because they know that uh, after a while, man, you know, when things are not going well, they, you know, they got to change it up and they have that level of sense. And that's what it is, you know, for the, the elect that come to serve the Lord and my shy, our shy. Because you know when you get tired of being bamboozled by your source system, man, you just want a, a coping mechanism that will uh, help your life function better at a spiritual level so you could deal with whatever else is coming. That's the scriptures, man. That's exactly why men accepted the uh, the doctrine of the Lord Amashach Yahushai that he has uh, furnished through GMS and that's just what it is you know when the Lord gives you an opportunity to uh, redeem yourself 
you have to accept the offer and that's what Yahweh Shai was doing you know that's why he always had to minister to the people you know they always accuse Yahweh Shai of being a friend of the of the harlots and the publicans and uh, the so-called literates man like you know what, what these folks have to offer you and all that stuff man why do you want to hang around you know, folks that are at the bottom of the barrel. You know, they always like to make jokes. You know, why you want to hang around with uh, these illiterate folks, man? You know, that's how they, they, they view Yahweh Shai, man. As, uh, as one that wasn't using his, uh, his prestige, <laughs> you know, to, to, to the uh, upliftment of... Uh, the so-called governing body back then, man. Yahweh Shai said he's the physician and uh, he's only come to help heal the sick. You know, to heal the sick. And that's what our people need. They need, a he they need healing. They need to accept the uh, healing that the Lord Hamashak Yahweh Shai is offering. The therapy the Lord Hamashak Yahweh Shai is offering. And that's what it is, man. So that was the point there. You know, we all have to keep our vows unto the Lord, man. Once you've been called to do the work, just do it. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let any arguments within the brotherhood, you know, distract you from uh, fulfilling your lot. You don't want to be the start of rumors and all that stuff, man. You know, rumors, 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 man. You know, always conniving behind brothers' backs, always starting, you know, false uh, ideology. Mosai doesn't want that. Most I just want sincerity and truth in the body of the church. That's all, that's how you eliminate the room that uh, leaven likes to uh, fester in, and you have to learn how to push out all the relevant uh, thoughts that you do not need. Man, if it's not if it's not worth speaking about, don't bring it up, don't bring it up. If it's not worth uh, your time and energy of the brother of the of brotherhood and the church, don't bother making it a uh, a point of contention. If it if it is irrelevant, if it is irrelevant, keep it irrelevant. Is that what simple it should be like? You know that's how simple it should be. Don't don't make a you know how you say don't make a a mound out of a, of out, out, out of a, a grain of rice, man. You know, just keep it, keep it as uh, out of a dust speck of dust. You know, just like the Lord talks, you know, Scripture talks about uh, a spittle and all that stuff. If it's not worth uh, thinking about. Let it go. It's not worth discussing. It's relevant uh, thoughts and uh, distraction is not helpful for the body. So it drains, man. It's, it's, it's a drain. It drains. That's why you know chats just chats just keep going on and on. And once the point has been made, the point has been made. There's nothing else to discuss. You know, just uh, you know, let the chat chill. You know, let the chat just uh, catch a break. You know, take a, a moment of uh, moment of silence to reflect. And that's one thing we all have to build upon, man moment of silence to reflect upon what has been said all right because uh you know just brothers like to give their own perspective you know you don't need to have several responses in a thread man. just uh you know just observe you know learn to observe more observe more observe more observe more you know you can't keep up with every post just learn to observe you know, it's not every time you got to post something. Just, you know, time is, is good to be a bystander. You know, just pay attention. You, you learn more that way. You know, when you make a vow unto the Lord, don't be don't be hasty, you know, to, uh, to drop what you know. Just learn to listen, you know. Be in that spirit of being a, a listener. You know, meditate upon what you have heard. And then you, you take notes. And when the time is right, you know, the opportunity for you to speak will present itself. A valuable time. You know, it's not every point that is valid. 
will come out at the right at, at the time you want it to come out. You know, every valid point has its time and season. That's what uh, I've learned in this ministry, man. Every valid point that you have has its time that it has to come out. Just because you have some important revelation doesn't mean when you bring it out before the, the brothers, it's going to have a significant uh, uh, attention attached to it. It's about when the Lord decides he has to come out. You know, because when, when you see certain things and brothers don't uh, take it, uh, how you say it, uh, seriously, it's because the Lord didn't want it to come out. It's just that simple. But when the time is right and you bring out the point, you bring out the observation, then the most I will open up their spirit. That's how the Lord operates, man. So always remember that, man. When you already have a, a point to make, it doesn't mean is going to be accepted because the Lord has to authorize <laughs> the spirit of brothers to be opened to accept the point you're making, man. That's one thing about visions. You know, every vision that you have is not meant to be uh, made a, uh, into a video. That's something you have to uh, keep to yourself. You know, just like in the time of uh, forefather Ezra, you know, it's not everything that the Lord showed him that he had to show to the people. So you have to learn to have uh, discretion. And discretion helps, man. When you use your discretion properly, you're not uh, in a haste to make a vow before the Lord. So uh, that's the point of this lesson. Abaratiza, you've been edified by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakadash, with the approval of Yahweh. Shalom.